Hey everyone. In our previous session, we learned what are fractions and few types of fractions. I asked you guys a question in the end of our previous session. Many of you commented and I was thrilled that so many of you wrote the correct answer. But for the people who got it wrong, let me explain a little bit to them. If you said that some of the numbers are not fractions because they are not in the form of a by b then you are mistaken every number can be written in the form of a by b and now here it satisfies the definition of a fraction so now we can conclude that all these numbers are also fractions actually all the numbers are divided into fractions and irrational numbers so let's move ahead with this session today we will learn few more different types you guys went to ben's house and had one fourth part of a chocolate each one of you had an equal amount of chocolate now suppose you guys order pizza too The pizza was divided into 8 equal parts. Now here, each one of you will get two pieces out of the 8. So, what will be the fraction here? 2 by 8, right? But what if I tell you that everyone had the same fraction of chocolate and pizza? But this doesn't look the same. Here, 2 by 8 and 1 by 4 are same but written in a different manner and these kind of fractions are known as equivalent fractions equivalent fractions are fractions which represent the same part of whole but are two or more different fractions equivalent fractions are very simple to form You just have to multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Let's take a fraction and find its equivalent fractions. 3 by 9. The equivalent fractions can be 1 by 3, 9 by 27 and so on. Can we make more equivalent fractions for the fraction 3 by 9? If you said no, then you should try again this time. 3 by 9 and 6 by 18 are also equivalent fractions. 3 by 9 and 12 by 36 are also equivalent fractions. And so on. There's a trick that will help you to confirm that whether the two fractions are equivalent or not. When you cross multiply two fractions, if their products are equal, that means they are equivalent fractions. This is also helpful when you have to find a missing term in two equivalent fractions. Let's move to another type of fraction which is known as the simplest form of fraction. A fraction is said to be in its simplest form if its numerator and denominator have no common factor other than 1. To obtain the simplest form of fraction We keep dividing numerator and denominator by the same number until they cannot be divided any further. Say for example, 12 by 36. Now here, 1 by 3 cannot be divided any further, so this will be the smallest form for the fraction 12 by 36. 1 and 3 have only 1 as a factor. Hence These fractions are known as simplest form of fractions. While we were learning simplest fraction, we also learned various examples of equivalent fractions too. Isn't it? Now here we move to the last two forms of fractions. Like fractions and unlike fractions. Like fractions are fractions with same denominators and fractions with different denominators are known as unlike fractions let's learn something about comparison of these fractions when we say comparing we are trying to figure out that either the fractions are equal 
or one is bigger than the other. Let's move ahead with comparison of like fractions. So, can you separate like fractions from this group of fractions? Now here, 3 by 5 and 4 by 5 are like fractions. And here we can say that 4 by 5 is greater than 3 by 5. When the denominator of fractions are same, you just have to focus on the numerator. Whichever fraction has bigger numerator will be the bigger fraction. So if the numerator is same, then will we focus on denominator? Yes, whichever fraction has smaller denominator will be the bigger fraction. But what happens when they neither have same denominator nor numerator? Situation is a little different then. If we can somehow make the denominators equal, then we will surely be comparing these fractions as like fractions. Here we can convert any fraction into like fraction. Can you think of any idea that how we can make the denominators equal? Here we are going to use LCM method to find a common denominator of both the fractions. But why are we using LCM? LCM will give us the smallest number and it also reduces a lot of calculation. So now we will take LCM of 3 and 4 because they are the denominators. Now LCM of 3 and 4 is 12, right? Now we have to make the denominator as 12 in both the fractions. So we will multiply the denominators by 4 and 3 respectively. Now the denominators are equal. But aren't our fractions altered because of this process? So here we made a mistake of not multiplying the numerator with the same number. This was a stupid mistake but we learn by making mistakes only. Just make sure we don't repeat them. So here we will multiply the numerator by the same number with which we multiplied the denominator. Now this looks like like fractions, isn't it? Now here, whichever's numerator is bigger is the bigger fraction, right? And hence, we can say that 4 by 3 is a greater fraction compared to 5 by 4. But what will happen if we compare these fractions through numerator? Will that be right? If I make the numerator also same using LCM, then as I said previously, the fraction with the smaller denominator will be the bigger fraction. So here we learned an application of LCM in order to compare to unknown fractions. Here we are done with another session of fractions completing all about fractions and the different types of fractions. Before I leave, let's do something interesting. Have you ever wondered how to display fractions on a number line? It's actually very simple. Let's try putting 1 by 2 on a number line. 1 by 2 means 2 parts of 1. So, we can divide 1 into 2 equal parts and here we can mark 1 by 2. This was simple, isn't it? Let's try with 4 by 5. Hmm, this looks a little tricky, but believe me, it's not. Here, we will divide 1 into 5 equal parts and then we will count till 4 parts and we will mark it here. This was simple yet one very interesting activity. Can you mark these fractions on a number line for me? But have you ever thought of fractions being on the left side of a number line? The answer is simple and you can comment it in the comment section below. Next time we meet, we will talk about adding and subtracting all different kinds of fractions. Till then, like this video and subscribe to our channel and keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.